Hey YouTube, it's John from the Biohack channel. Today I'm reviewing the brand new Mito Adapt 4.0 Max from Mito Red Light. It's one of the most advanced full body red light therapy panels on the market, featuring 11 modes, 8 peak wavelengths, and a host of updates and refinements. I'll be putting it to the test and make some comparisons to the Mito Pro 1500X I reviewed a while back. Alright, let's dive into the video. I want to mention that when you use my discount codes and links, I receive a small commission. This doesn't cost you anything extra and greatly helps support future reviews. Comparing the different panel offerings from Mito Red Light, the Mito Adapt 4.0 series is the most advanced offering in Mito Red Light's panel lineup in terms of features and price. The 4.0 Max is currently the largest panel size in the Adapt product line featuring a 288 lens 576 chip array. The panel size measures 36 inches long, 12 inches wide, and 2.5 inches deep. It weighs 22 pounds and comes with a 3 year warranty and free US shipping. Looking through the specs, it's nice to see third party irradiance testing becoming the new standard. It also has flicker free LEDs and low EMF. I tested the EMF with my cornet and the EMF is rock bottom at 6 inch distance. The Mito Adapt 4.0 series uses the Espio Spectral Range. This provides 8 peak LED wavelengths within the red and near infrared action spectra, including the newly added 940 nanometer wavelength. By comparison, most current generation panels output approximately 4 peak wavelengths, which make up the majority of the panel's output. I check the red and near infrared wavelengths with my IFO spectrometer. All wavelengths show up perfectly in the live readouts. If you're interested in 940, I'll leave research links in the description. The Mito Adapt 4.0 Max is currently priced at $14.99. If you use my discount link before purchase, the price is automatically reduced 5% at checkout. And if you have an HSA or FSA account, you may be able to use those funds towards this purchase. Let's check out what comes in the box. You get a metal door hook, vinyl hanging strap, steel hanging cables and clip, spare mounting hardware, Mito Red IR3 glasses, opaque goggles, a grounded power cable, and a really nice full color instruction manual. Taking a closer look at the Max, the panel shell comes with a semi-gloss white finish a new touchscreen controller, updated panel aesthetics, and a new compact form factor. The updated door hook has a longer post, which keeps the panel in perfect alignment from top to bottom. We can also see the Max is using dual chip LEDs, framed with boxed channel flanges on both sides. This dual channel design gives the panel a sense of depth while adding stiffness to the case and providing a premium look and feel. The Max has the unique ability to drive one of the dual chips per lens with full power in broadband modes. I'll go over each mode with greater detail later in the video. Zooming into the dual chip lenses, each LED bulb can drive full power to red or near infrared giving maximum flexibility for wavelength distribution and dose sequencing. Comparing side by side with the Mito Pro 1500X, the extra width and compact form factor of the Max become noticeable. The Max has 12 less dual chip LEDs, less length, and two additional peak wavelengths. Flipping the Max around you can see the built in panel handle and power switch. The handle could be a bit deeper and wider, but it pairs well with the new compact case design. Zooming into the fan assembly we can see the updated fans that are designed to go up against a radiator or heat sink. These fans have a lot of practical benefits and cooling potential compared to standard fans. The Max produce 44.6 decibels of fan noise, a few decibels higher than the Pro 1500X. It falls about average compared to the current generation of panels I've tested. If sound is an important factor, I was able to shave a few decibels and improve the tone of the fan noise with these low cost acoustic panels. If you're on a budget, you can just soften up your environment by using blankets and a rug to diffuse the sound waves coming off the panel. Before we dive into the touchscreen, I want to quickly show how the modes look at the face of the panel. It's nice to see the updated touchscreen controls and modern layout. Alright, let's take a look at the navigation. The start pause button turns the panel on or off with the selected settings. The settings button opens up the submenu with a quick adjust time slider at the top of the screen. 
To adjust the time directly, a center press brings up a keypad you can use to set the time manually. Diving into the mode settings, Mode 1 offers the most even wavelength distribution with 455 watt power draw. Mode 2 routes full power to the red wavelength band, pulling an impressive 480 watt power draw. Mode 3 weights the deep red range and spreads the near infrared out evenly with a 458 watt power draw. Mode 4 weights the amber and red range and spreads out near infrared evenly with a 460 watt power draw. Mode 5 weights the deep near infrared range and spreads the red range out evenly pulling 455 watts. Mode 6 weights the shorter near infrared wavelength range and spreads the red range out evenly pulling 461 watts. Mode 7 uses two peak wavelengths, 660 and 670, pulling 260 watts. Mode 8 uses two peak wavelengths, 590 and 630 nanometer, pulling 270 watts. Mode 9 uses two peak wavelengths, 850 and 940, pulling 216 watts and providing the longest wavelengths in isolation. Mode 10 uses two peak wavelengths, 810 and 830 nanometer, pulling 217 watts. Mode 11 routes full power to the near infrared range, pulling 409 watts. This is my go-to mode at night after the sun sets. Moving on to brightness control, you have the option to adjust brightness using a slider or in 1% increments plus or minus. The near infrared pulse option allows you to toggle at 10 Hz frequency. This can be helpful if you want to quickly reduce warmth on the skin or reduce the near infrared dose. You also have the option to turn Bluetooth on or off as needed. The other settings option allows you to fine tune the beeper and screen brightness as needed. The main menu also has shortcuts for brightness and near infrared pulse functions. You also have the ability to track sessions and feedback. If you're into data collection, I think it's a neat feature that can help you get the most out of the mode options. So what kind of power figures is this panel outputting? To check the irradiance, I'll use my VLP2000 thermal pile. By the way, if you like this content and want to see more videos, like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any questions, drop them in the comments section below. If you want to pick up the Mito Adapt Max 4.0, Check out my discount links in the description. Here's the peak and average irradiance values from 6 to 12 inch distance. Remember guys, we want the ideal amount of irradiance. More is not always better. This is the perfect distance zone to treat the body with maximum crossover beams around 8 to 9 inches from the panel surface. If you enjoyed this video, give me a shout out in the comments below and please consider using my links before purchase. It gives you a discount and helps the channel produce more content. That's all I have for you today. Like, comment, and subscribe for the YouTube algorithm. If you're on Facebook, check out our group with over 18,000 members. It's a great way to share your self-improvement journey and learn valuable insights from the community.